That sine wave represents the changing voltage of an AC circuit. So the question is, if that's a 120 volt circuit, where's 120 volts on that sine wave? And what does it mean if we call it 120 volts, even though it's a bunch of varying voltages? Let's go. I'm gonna to try to explain RMS using only seventh grade math. And by the end, hopefully you'll understand why those formulas work for both AC and DC. So the first guess of where 120 is, is the peaks, but it actually peaks at 170 and then negative 170. And we wouldn't really care about the peaks. What we really care about is what is that variable voltage? What is its ability to create watts? What is its ability to do work? So then you might say, okay, let's take the average. The average doesn't work either, and let me show you why. So the reason the average doesn't work is when half of your measurements are positive and half of your measurements are negative, they will always average out to zero. So the average voltage of that wave is zero. So even though technically the average voltage of that wave is zero, we know its average ability to do work is not zero. And the reason for that is negative voltages do just as much work as positive voltages, just in the opposite direction. It only looks like the opposite direction when you reference a neutral, but that's a different story. Here we go. The, the circuit completes and the current flows from here to here. And over here, it flows from here to here. This connection in this direction creates just as much watts as this connection in that direction. So what we do to deal with the negative numbers when we're trying to figure the average is we square them. We square all of our measurements because when you multiply a negative times a negative, it equals a positive. Positive 170 times positive 170 equals 28,900. And also negative 170 times negative 170 gives us the same answer. So now we're gonna take all of our negative measurements, square them, get the average, take the root or the square root of that average, and that'll give us a positive value. All right, now we have to take all of our measurements and square them. And I normally don't do math videos because I'm gonna to tend to put my foot in my mouth. So I watched some videos to make sure I was trying to say the right thing and it didn't help. One video said it's as easy as taking 10 measurements evenly spaced. And another video went into 25 minutes of calculus trying to explain stuff. But either way, once we have all of our measurements, we square them, which turns them all into a positive value. So then we take all those values and create an average, and then we take the square root of that average, and that number will give us this wave's ability to do work. It will give us a voltage that represents the DC equivalent of this wave. Once we have successfully done the math and applied that formula, we come up with a value that is called RMS, root mean squared. So mean is the same thing as average. That is the RMS value of the wave. And 120 volts is the RMS value of that wave. And your electrical meters will give you the value of the voltage displayed in RMS. And most of them, or a lot of them, are labeled as RMS. There's a difference between true RMS and RMS. But once you have the RMS value of the wave, you can plug it directly into your Ohm's law or your power wheel, just like you had a DC value. So hopefully that gives you an understanding of the idea of RMS. Certainly do not take my video and go try to pass a math test. If you're really interested in learning the more detailed math and the more correct math, go check out some smarter people's videos because I genuinely try to avoid math in my videos. But there it is. That is the idea, the concept of RMS. The negatives hurt us when we're trying to find out the average voltage of the wave. So we get the squares involved. We start squaring things to remove the negatives. That's the key. Now there are a bunch of tricks and shortcuts you can use to take 170 and turn it into 120 or 120 into 170. Those shortcuts only work because we have a clean, perfect sine wave. And that's kind of the difference between true RMS and RMS. So true RMS is giving you the real RMS of a wave, even if the wave is sloppy and not a perfect wave. RMS is more like the shortcut. So if you have a meter that doesn't say true RMS, it's kind of assuming you have a clean wave. What I'm curious about in my oscilloscope is broken. I can't get it to turn on. I think the battery died. It's a little cheapy. I'm going to have to buy a new one. If somebody has a DC inverter, what is the peak on the DC inverter? Because that has the square wave. I, I, I can't imagine it doesn't peak at 170 and hold. It must peak lower than 170, but not 120 maybe? I don't know. I would love to have added that in my video if my scope was working. So if you have a working scope, put it on an inverter. Let me know. Thank you very much.